Hello and welcome to the Kimono Spark Highlight Show. This week we'll recap select races from Saturday, July 13 and Sunday, July 14. Saturday's race card was dedicated to trainers, owners, jockeys and horses that have been inducted into the Hall of Fame category. Saturday's feature was the 28th running of the Thoroughbred Racing Hall of Fame Stakes Trophy, while Sunday's feature event was the PW's Choice Trophy. We begin with race 2 from Saturday. This was the Blue Menthol, named after the Horse of the Year back in 1998 and 1999. A claiming event for three years old and up. A small field of six going seven furlongs or 1,400 meters. High-flying jockey Radesh Roman was aboard trainer Ralph Porter's Classical Orb, the lone importee in the lineup. They're off and racing. Classical Orb is the last to leave the gate and is left at the back of the field. As they make their way toward the six, it's Little Grovey thing on that lead. Right there, too, that is in the mix. That's Tigray Express, and Tigray Express passes the six with that lead. Right against the rail, that's Colorado Ranger. Trattle back into third, that's Little Grovey thing. Then comes the pair of Inspired Miracle and Sir John as they pass the five. And a huge gap, about six or seven lengths, open up to the trailing one. That's Classical Orb. They head towards the four, and it is Colorado the range and narrowly on that lead just about a half a length in front of Tigray Express there are three lengths in front of uh, Inspired Miracle Sir John let loose now and asked to go now slipping down into third then comes Little Grovey thing and still tailing off badly that's Classical Orb but it is Colorado Ranger that kicks it into gear and goes on about four lengths in front of chasing in second that's Tigray Express running on the rail and coming down into it that Coming on, that is Inspired Miracle. Sir John has to do a, a lot more, but Colorado Ranger is in full of, full of, full of run this afternoon. And Colorado Ranger straightens with about a six, six length lead and looks to be on recall. It's Colorado Ranger chasing in second. That's Inspired Miracle. Colorado Ranger in front and traveling nicely. And Colorado Ranger has this one all one. Colorado Ranger and Robert Halliday. He's down in the end from in second. That's Inspired Miracle. Then comes Sir John and the Tigray Express back in fourth. Colorado Ranger proves that the step down in class from a million was sufficient to get the job done. One at 752 started back and gets the job done at 750 once again. Surprisingly, found the lead and made every post of winning one. Robert Haldin riding there for only Shrina Bars Magin Touch a gate to our performance in the Blue Mental from Colorado Ranger. Runner up was Inspired Miracle, Ray and Lewis replacing Anthony Dance under the saddle. That one completed exactly and a disappointing third was a favorite. Sir John. A five and a quarter win margin with a big gate to wire performance from the six to one bet, Colorado Ranger. With jockey Robert Hardball Halladine in the saddle, riding for trainer Boris McIntosh. They completed the 1400 meters journey in a minute and 28 seconds flat. Race 7 was named for Hall of Famer Richard Azan. This was a maiden condition race for native bred three-year-olds doing a quick dash over a thousand meters straight. A nine-horse field reduced to eight with a scratch of Lil Maggie from the one draw. A wide open contest with female jockey Abigail Abel called up to ride Jason Acosta's big pop. They're off and racing. Radham gets a good start. Was the near side, right in the middle, that's Gilroy prompting the pace. Over on the far side, that's Big Pop and the Miracle Angel. These are the prominent ones. Joining them also, that's Papidon. Right behind them, that's Sheer de Jour. And left out of it, that's Golden Lawyer. They make their way out of the chute, and it is Radham racing prominently, could have that overall lead. Gelroy is right beside him. Also there, that's the Miracle Angel and Big Pop there, virtually in a line, coming out of the chute to the two for a long pole. Radham closest to us with that lead. It's Radham in front of Gelroy. Over on the far side, the Miracle Angel trying to put in a punch, but it's Radham. The Miracle Angel now gets rolling, coming to the furlong pole. The Miracle Angel, Radham is right there too. It's the Miracle Angel, Radham and Gelroy still across the track. The Miracle Angel begins to find lane footing and the Miracle Angel begins to go away. It's a double foot, terrific having Foster. The Miracle Angel beats Radham, Gelroy and uh, Papidon backing forth. The favorite, uh, the Mercury Angel gets the job done. A double on the card there for Tim Foster. 
Radam completes the exact, a good exact there, 246 yards with the favor getting a better up first. Really well supported Radam at 2 to 1. The Quinella Plus is a must, 474 dollars in dividends there. Six tickets are alive on the Kids 9, 839 tickets are still alive on the Twilight 6. Leading rider Tevin Foster lands his first win on the Saturday card aboard the 3-5 favourite De Miracle Angel, beating the likes of Radam in second place, Gelroy in third and Papi Don in fourth. Race number eight on the Saturday card was one of the two trophy events on the day. The Reynal A. Gonzalez Trophy, a maiden condition event for native-bred four-year-olds and up. A wide open contest with a nine horse field set to go seven furlongs or 1400 meters. Breaking from the eight draw was the hot two to one favorite clowning around under the mount of Shamari Mir. The rough on racing, oh, really missing it badly. That scheme to fame is left way out of it. Give the field a huge jump as they head towards the six. It's Tormboy in front, Toots right there too. Clowning around watches them in third on the outside. That is a Roaring Thunder right against the real Princess Rhea. Then comes Smart Player, six or seven lengths before we come to double the cash now, being overtaken by the very slow starter that's game to fame. They head past the five and head towards the four furlong point, and it is Storm Boy narrowly on that lead. Storm Boy right there too, that's Toots. Right against the rail, that's Princess Rhea as they pass the four. Smart Player comes next. Going down into it too, that's, that's clowning around. Then comes a Roaring Thunder, behind Roaring Thunder, game to fame. Recovering well after that bad break. Select Prince and racing at the back of the field and hopelessly out of it, that stubbed the catch. They've passed the three and they'll come into the lane shortly. It's Storm Boy still on that lead. Toots is right there and in touch right there too. That's Princess Rhea and Princess Rhea now cuts the corner and turn. Here comes on the rail that's clowning around out wide and coming on and looks to be Storm Boy is not yet finished but Princess Rhea is in front clowning around trying to sang trying to come through the sandwich. It's still Princess Rhea in front. Storm Boy is right there too, clowning around, looking for space, but it's Princess Rhea. Storm Boy begins to find a second win, and Storm Boy now hops to the front, and Storm Boy goes on to win from Princess Rhea, clowning around. Then comes Select Prince and uh, Smart Player back in fifth. A mild upset victory for Ramon Nepe aboard the 8-1 bet Storm Boy for owner and trainer Courtney Williams. A close finish with only a one-length margin between the winner and second-place finisher Princess Rhea. Third went to Clowning Around and fourth to Select Prince. Race 9 was the day's feature, the 28th running of the Thoroughbred Racing Hall of Fame Stakes Trophy. A graded stakes open allowance event for three years old and up. A competitive field of six with I am Fred, highly fancy to get the better again of stable companion and next best runner in the lineup. Is that a fact? Have a seat, they're off and racing. Sensational move, narrowly misses it. As going for that lead, that is a Madeline Sunshine. There goes I Am Fred, sensational move. Hustling up and now, sensational move. Shows superior speed about. A half a length in front of I Am Fred on the outside. Right there too, that's Jordan Reigns on the rail. That is a Madeline Sunshine out wide. And coming around, that is a, is that a fact? And racing at the back of the field, that's she's my friend so the battle continues up front with sensational move and i am fred passing the three glued together they're about two lengths in front of is that a fact racing in third then comes jordan reigns behind jordan reigns that's madeline sunshine and way out of it just she's my friend there at the top of the lane sensational move and i am fred they're still matching stride sensational move stubborn and also coming on here comes is that a fact? Bursting in between horses and now. Is that a fact? Has assumed the lead. Coming to the furlong pole. Is that a fact? Begins to sprint up with this one. Is that a fact? Sprinting away. Still holding second. That sensational move. Coming up the rail. For second now, that's Madeline Sunshine. Is that a fact? Winning emphatically. Beating Madeline Sunshine. Sensational move. Then comes I Am Fred. She's my friend. And Jordan Reigns. An upset win there in the Thorbert Racing Hall of Fame Stakes Trophy. And that was... 
A mind upset win for Zeta Fact. Shaban Townsend for Jason Gosson and Carlton Watson. They teamed up recently with Mamma Mia to make it a one scraper for a seven and a half furlong contest. And now we see Zeta Fact bursting through over five and a half furlong, turning the tables on recent conquer. His table mate, I am Fred. Uh, basically uh, a no-show by I am Fred today. That was not the I am Fred that won last time out in 105, two by seven in the court events. So we had Jason Acosta with four of the six runners. She's my friend, Martin Sunshine. I am Fred and is that a fact? And the holding favorite, only able to muster fourth. A no-show for the favorite, I am Fred, but is that a fact? Exact revenge on his stablemate and giving trainer Jason Acosta a one-two exact a finish with Madeline Sunshine in second. Gary Subrati's sensational move finished third, while Jason Acosta had another top four finish with I am Fred. Saturday's 10th and final was a maiden condition race for native bred three-year-old fillies. A 13-horse veal reduced to 12 with the scratch of Have a Joy from the four box. O'Neill Mullings was aboard the highly fancied and well-backed She's Dallas Love, breaking from gate number nine. They're off and racing. Rapida and a Tiffany Blue and a Sweet Burner. Those are the ones that misses it as they blast going toward the half mile and it is making the runnings. That's a trust fund baby on that lead right there too. That she's Dallas Love rushing down on the outside. That's La Vida. These are the prominent ones. Then comes a social mischief. Ch Kensia comes next. Adira. Tiffany Blue comes next. Then comes Himaya behind that one, be behind Himaya. That's a Rapida right against the rail. They're at the top of the lane, and it's Trust Fund Baby doing it nicely so far. Coming to the furlong and a half pole, it's Trust Fund Baby. Dallas, she's Dallas Love attacking. It's Trust Fund Baby still in front and now begins to stress this lead. It's Trust Fund Baby coming away from these. Trust Fund Baby at the half of furlong pole is home and dry. Trust Fund Baby running away with the final one. It's a double for this sneaky fox radish Roman. Trust Fund Baby beats she's Dallas Love. Adira comes next. Got tight for fourth, could be Tiffany Blue, and even tighter for fifth, Himaya and Social Mischief. Radish Roman romps to the tenth and final winning by an impressive eight and a half lengths over the three to five favorite. She's Dallas Love in second. Running on in third was Adira, Tiffany Blue in fourth, and Social Mischief completing the final high five spot. We take a break now on the Kimana Spark Highlight Show. And when we return, we'll recap select races from the Sunday card on July 14th. Welcome back to the Kimana Spark Highlight Show. We continue to recap by picking up at race number two from July 14th, the Sunday card. This was an optional claiming event for three-year-olds going 1,400 meters. A small field of six declared to start with jockey O'Shea Nugent replacing the injured Paul Francis atop the 8-5 bet anonymous. They're off and racing XY Soul and AKA Storm marginally missing it and left at the back of the field as they make their way coming towards the six for a long point. And it is Tech a punt on that lead on the outside by Anonymous. So Anonymous points from Tech Upon. There about six lengths in front of, of racing in third. That is a fault line. Then comes a AKA Storm and just left at the back of the field as they pass the five. That's XY Soul. They make their way towards the uh, four furlong point and these two are glued together. Tech Upon and uh, Anonymous. There are about seven lengths tearing away on the lead. Uh, these two about seven lengths before we come to Fault line, then comes uh, AKA Storm and still left out of it. That is uh, XY Soul. These two are still going at it. They're going at it, hammer and thumbs. Still just on that lead. It is anonymous. 
take a punt coming back on the inside. Anonymous and take a punt. These two are not doing themselves any favor. Take a punt. Anonymous, they're still glued together and fighting hard. They're setting themselves up for maybe a run-on challenge. But And now Anonymous points from take a punt, who is not yet done out wide. That's AKA Storm and Fault Line has thrown in the queue. But it's Anonymous marginally. Don't know that goes down on the rail. Take a punt trying to come back. Anonymous begins to find more. And Anonymous finds plenty for O'Shea Nugent to win by about four. Take a punt is second. Then comes a, then comes a fourth line, and AKA Storm, XY Soul is fifth. A nice win there by Anonymous, and that's uh, two time champion apprentice O'Shea Nugent from Pop Dunn, and that's joining in the Saturday for Trader Philip Lee and owner Robert Williams. First time of the claim and raced without a claiming tag, compliments of the waiver claim rule, and they have another chance to win with Anonymous. Anonymous could very well make it two wins from two starts for new connections. Take a punt, the big favorite, ran it throughout, but uh, was not able to keep up with Anonymous, and they came back in the top two spots with the second favorite getting the better of the favorite. A chance ride for O'Shea Nugent lands him a good win aboard fresh off the claim Anonymous, who now takes orders from the bonds of trainer Philip Lee. They completed the seven furlong scores in one minute, 29 seconds flat. Race 7 on the Sunday card was at the John Clifton Wright Memorial Cup, a maiden condition event for native bred three-year-olds going a distance of six furlongs or 1,200 meters. A small field of six declared to go post one with the four-horse Girlie the Butcher reflecting a lot of stable confidence in the betting. They're off and running. Came out in a beautiful line as Girlie the Butcher and uh, so beautiful, go for it. So beautiful, shows superior speed and goes on from Girl of the Butcher. Secret Mission is on the outside of Queen Vaughn, rushing up to that uh, Sinita Estrella as they go past the, they head toward the uh, four furlong point and it's so beautiful, bouncing easily on a length and a half lead from Girl of the Butcher, racing in second. Sinita Estrella is hustled up and rushing down into second. Right there in fourth, that's Queen Vona. Then comes Sea of Blue and left at the back of the field, that secret mission. They go past the uh, three furlong point and now Janita Estrella tests his uh, so beautiful on that lead, so beautiful responds with a half a length, now a length lets out a notch, the sneaky fox on so beautiful, so beautiful turns with that lead and skitters away about three lengths in front of Chinita Estrella toiling in, in the second spot, it is so beautiful, is really traveling nicely at this stage and I think the writing is totally on the wall, so beautiful, it's gonna romp this one and this one will be another double digit win for the sneaky fox, it's three on the day, so beautiful beautiful going on to win and win comfortably in the end. Trinita Estrella has done well to hold second. Queen Vaughna is third and secret mission back in fourth. So, so beautiful. The 10 star banker on the Sunday card delivers the goods by 18 and three quarter lengths. So that's another Rum City win uh, for the Sinky Voss Riders Roman right there for the apprentice master Anthony Babadunes and they had another Rum City win in the previous event race number six with Baby Love winning by 12 and three quarter lengths. So over 31 lengths combined margin of victory uh, for the winners there of races six and seven both ridden by Radish Roman both trained by Anthony Babadunes and that's the third win on the card for Radish Robin, the Sneaky Fox, three so far on the card. No wins out yet from Tevin Foster. Yesterday, they had a double each. And last week, Saturday, we had Tevin Foster with a four-timer and Radish Robin with a four-timer on Sunday. So the lead now cut down from 10 to 7. And I remember quite a few weeks ago, the lead was actually 16. And there's a phrase that comes to mind. Long run, short catch. So keep on riding Radish Roban and eventually you should be able to catch Tevin Foster. He has been leading for a long time and indeed the same goes. Long run short catch. So don't go in any racing fans. We have five months of racing remaining and this one is going to come right down. A good ride by last season's most improved rider, Radesh Roman, riding for his apprentice, Master Anthony Baba Nunes, Winning with a comprehensive 18 and three quarters of a length victory margin over Chinita Estrella in second place. They completed the distance in 1 minute and 16 seconds flat. Race 8 was an overnight allowance event for three years old and up. An eight horse field declared fit to start with Gary Sobrati's Money Market, now the mount of Aaron Chartry, 
replacing Paul Francis in the saddle. They're off on racing, not a bad start. Marginally left at the back of the field at a race car as a bootylicious pole, pole position one, Chocomoch tracking on the outside, rejected Rogers, they passed a four. Then comes Freedom Street, Money Market tacking on to those. Also there, that's Laban. Then comes uh, Life is Life and Race Car left at the back of the field. Bootylicious bouncing on a four three lengths lead in front of Chocomo chasing hard. Money Market trying to cut the corner and gain some ground, but Bootylicious is not for catching. Bootylicious at the top of the lane kicks away by three, four, maybe five or maybe more, but this looks over as soon as they enter the straight Bootylicious gets it into gear and Bootylicious is kicking away from these running on encouragingly money market but only for second Bootylicious home and dry Bootylicious by about seven lengths money market is second Chocomo third Laban runs on to be fourth an impressive win by Bootylicious in race number eight uh, showing them a clean pair of heels there going five rounds up in the cockpit one minute flat winning by six and a quarter lengths with 57 kilos last year's one bird stakes winner proves that she is indeed a classy sprinter. Ray Lewis did duties there for trainer Peter John Passard and owner E.S. Campbell and A.J. Kuzla Teague. Champion jockey ran Lewis with his first win on the Sunday card aboard the 2 to 1 favorite Bootylicious, a four year old Bay Philly trained and conditioned by Peter John Passard, bred by Karen Passard. The ninth and final from the Sunday card was at the day's feature event, the PW's Choice Trophy. A restricted allowance event for native bred three year olds and maiden importees three years old and up, fillies only. A modest field of 11 set to go post ward with jockey Radesh Roman looking for a fourth win on the day aboard trainer Anthony Nunes' Queen of Soul. The rough and racing, pineapple and, uh, do and uh, Lucy in the sky along with Rackdale misses it. But uh, going for that lead, uh, Motivate Me Baby is motivated to go right in to that lead. It's Motivate Me Baby from Sipping on Sunshine. Firecracker watches them on the rail. Then comes Crypto Girl. Hit and Run joins that pack. About a two length before we come to Queen of Soul, overtaken by Don't Tell Lulu. Then out wide, that's clear. Patrick Queen, Pineapple recovering after that break. Then a gap before we come to Rack Them and uh, Lucy in the sky racing at the back of the field. They go and head towards the uh, top of the lane and it is Motivate Me Baby, not, mo not, not being motivated much by Robert Halliday. Motivate Me Baby looks to have this in the back so far. It's Motivate Me Baby sipping on some coming forward. That is a Firecracker, it's Motivate Me Baby in front. Firecracker trying to get there. Also coming on late is Pineapple, but it's Motivate Me Baby in front with a good looking lead. Pineapple has got second. It's Motivate Me Baby by five lengths. Pineapple is second, then comes Firecracker. It run, looks to be fourth. And uh, maybe Don't Tell Lulu back in fifth. Jason DeCosta's Importy and the 2 to 5 favorite Motivate Me Baby lands at the curtain closer with jockey Robert Halladine in the saddle, beating Pineapple in second, Firecracker in third, hit and run fourth, and the final high five placing went to trainer Howard Bailey's Don't Tell Lulu. Well, this has been another edition of the Kimana Spark Highlight Show. I'll see you next time.